All right, in today's lesson, we're going to look at two essential questions. What is a function, and how can it be represented with an equation, a table of values, and a graph? We're going to concentrate on the table of values and the equation today, and we'll save the graph for another video. We're also going to try to identify domain and range of a relation, and when those are specifically presented as ordered pairs, a graph, or a table, We'll talk a little bit about domain and range, input, output, um, and dependent and independent variables. Okay, this first example is a function rule, y equals x plus 5.6, and we're given a specific set of domain values, or another way to say domain values is to call them input values. Okay, input values are your independent variable independent variable values so when we're talking about uh, in this case an independent variable that's X and these values 4 11 19 24 and 33 are the values that we're going to substitute in for the independent variable now the way we're going to evaluate this function is to create a table of values and there's a few different ways to create tables uh, the first way I'll show you for this example is we'll do it horizontally. We'll put the x values, the, the domain values or the input values on the top, and we'll put the y values on the bottom. So let's create this table. Our input values 4, 11, 19, 24, and 33. We're going to take each one of those and we're going to put them into our function rule here for x as input and then we'll see what we get out for y as our output. If we put 4 in and add 5.6 to it, 4 plus 5.6 is going to get us 9.6 will be the y value when we evaluate that. When we input 11, our next input for x, and add 5.6, our output is 16.6. Keep going here, 19 plus 5.6 is 24.6. 24 plus 5.6 is 29.6, and the last one, 33 plus 5.6 is 38.6. And now these values here, the, the values that we just got out of our function rule by putting in the domain values, those make our range. And so when we're talking about this specific rule with the domain that was given our range, is 9.6, 16.6, 24.6, and 38.6. Those are the values that make up our range, and those are the values of the dependent variable, which is, in this case, y. y is now called the dependent variable, because those answers that we just got in our range were all dependent variant. Let me try that again. How about variable? Variable. Those values for the dependent variable are all based upon the input values or the independent variables values. So this is our domain. This is our range. For this first example, let's take a look at another one. All right, here's another example. Slightly more complicated. You see your domain values right here. Again, those are our input values for x. We're going to plug them in right here in for your x. So let's create a table of values. Now there's another way to create a table of values. I'll show you a um, slightly different way here. Now this is going to have, I'm going to create three columns, x on the left and y on the right. And uh, you'll see what I what I do with this the, the middle column here in just a second. We're going to plug in 1 for x because that's in our domain. We're going to do 3.5 is an input value, we're going to do 8 as an input value, and we'll do 12.4 as an input value. All right. So um, when we plug in 1 into this expression for x, now I'm going to use this middle column to show the actual work. This is a little bit more complicated of a function rule, so here's the work in the middle column. If I plug in 1, I'm going to multiply first and then subtract the 1, so this answer is going to be 3 for the output. If I substitute 3.5 in for x, I'll show the work right here. Um, 3.5 times 4 is going to get me 14. 
14 minus 1 is 13. So you can use that middle column as a way to show your work and organize your work, especially for a uh, kind of complicated example here. 32 minus 1 is 31. And then the last one, if we input 12.4 in for x, 4 times 12.4 is going to get us 49.6. And then if we subtract 1, the output is 48.6. And then again, just like we saw in the last example, this collection of output values that we just came up right with right here, we're going to call that our range for this function rule with the given domain. A third example, we're going to switch the problem around now, and in, in you're given the actual table, you don't know what the, what the function rule is. So you're going to look at your domain up here, or your input values, you're going to look at your range down here, your output values, and we're going to kind of just get a sense of what we think might be happening based on the given input and how it's paired with the output. For instance, if we look here at negative 2 and 8. So I want to do something to negative 2 that after I've done it is going to get me 8 as an output. And if we start out really simple, maybe we just try addition. If I could add something to negative 2 to get 8, what would that something be? And the answer would be, it would be 10. Negative 2 plus 10 is 8. So my first thought is maybe, just maybe, if I do x plus 10, that will be my rule for getting y. Now, I just looked at one input and one output, so let's test it, see if it works for the next one. And if it does, we'll try it with the next one and see if we're right. So let's take a look at this input and output. If I put in negative 1 and add 10, I want to know what my output is. And it should be 9 if my rule is correct. Negative 1 plus 10 is 9. So that's a good, uh, a, a good example of our first original thought being correct. Uh, we'll try it again with 0 and 10. So 0 plus 10, does that equal 10? Yes, it does. And if we go down the line, 1 plus 10 is 11, so that looks good. 2 plus 10 is 12. 3 plus 10 is 13. And so by looking at each input and the output, I know that the rule I guessed on the first try, x plus 10 equals y, that's the rule for this table of values. All right, one last example of a table. Let's try and come up with the rule for this one. We'll start the same way we started the last example. We'll look at the input of 2 and an output of 1. So what could we possibly do to 2 to get an output of 1? Well, we can't add anything to 2, but we can subtract 1 from 2 to get 1. So my first guess is that maybe if we take x and subtract 1, we might get our y. So that works with 2. 2 minus 1 is 1, and that's our output. But let's try it with the next set of input and output and we'll see if we're right. So if I put in 4 for x and I subtract 1, do I get my output? No, because this gets us 3. The output is not 2. So that means this original guess of x minus 1 equals y can't possibly be the rule. It only worked for the first input. So let's try something else. Let's go back to the drawing board with 2 and 1. Um, what else could we do to 2 to possibly get 1 as an answer? Well, addition and subtraction didn't work. Uh, multiplication or division, what if we divided, what do we have to divide by? 2 divided by 2 equals 1. So that rule would be like x divided by 2 is our output y. And again, we're going to check our other input-output pairs to see if maybe that's the correct rule. So let's try 4 divided by 2 gets us 2. Is that correct? It is. Yeah, that's our... That's our output, so that works for that example. Let's try the next one. 6 divided by 2, and that answer is 3. Perfect. That matches that output. Now if I check all the other pairs, 8 divided by 2 is 4, 10 divided by 2 is 5, and 12 divided by 2 is 6. So this x divided by 2 equals y, that is the rule. We found it um, on, on the second try, but we still find it. Another way to write that, you could also write it as y equals x over 2. That also shows the division. Or possibly y equals 1 half times x. That's another way of writing the same rule.